Hello fellas, welcome back. So in this lesson, we're going to learn how to develop the convolution algorithm. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a copy of our last practical project and then just change a number of things and continue from there to save us time, yeah? So the last project was about uh, was about computing the standard deviation. So I'm going to make a copy of that project and rename it to convolution. I'll copy paste right click rename and i'll call this convolution like this and i'll open this and then i'll open with code blocks so i'll come over here open with and then i select code blocks like this So we, sh we just need to clean a number of things. First of all, we have to clean all of these functions. We're not doing anything with statistics here. So I'm just going to clean this and I'm going to clean all the functions for calculating the STD, the variance and the mean like this. We don't need any of those. Um, the reason why we copied and pasted was just to make us not start from scratch. I'm going to clean everything from the main function as well and then clean here as well. And all we have is this. We have our waveforms or C file, we, which has our input signal, and we already know what the input signal looks like. We have our yeah our dot C file, so we can rebuild and make sure there are no errors. I'll build by clicking over here, and it says zero errors, zero warnings. Right, so we are set. Let's continue. So in this project, what we're going to do is we're going to convolve two signals. And we're going to be able to convolve this because we're going to design our own convolution algorithm to help us convolve the two signals. The first signal is our standard input signal over here. And as its description here says, it's got two frequency components. It's got a low frequency one kilohertz component, which is indicated by a thousand hertz here, and then a high frequency 15 kilohertz component. And we're going to convolve it with an impulse response. So I've attached another file to this video and that file is, in, is titled impulse response.txt. So do download the text file and when you open the text file, you find an array in it. This is what it looks like. You find an array of type double and the array contains 29 element and it's got these numbers in it. And this is basically a filter kernel this impulse response is a filter kernel and this filter kernel is specifically designed to be a low pass filter with a cutoff frequency of 6 kilohertz so what's going to happen is if we convolve this filter kernel with our input signal it's going to block all frequencies above 6 kilohertz and the output signal will only contain frequencies below 6 kilohertz so because our input signal contains just two frequency components, one kilohertz and 15 kilohertz. Then you can guess that the output signal will have just one kilohertz. So that's what we're going to do in this, in this lesson. We're going to run our convolution algorithm and then plot the signals to see if indeed the output signal has a lower frequency or has a single frequency. We're going to do that now. So let's get straight to it. So copy the content of the um, impulse response text file and add it to the waveforms.c file. Once you've done that, we can just continue and we make this, this array accessible from our C file just by copying its header like this and using the extend keyword. So we can say extend here like this, we can add this and we're going to create another defined symbolic statement here to represent the length of this and we're going to call this impulse response length i'm just going to say define imp underscore rsp underscore length and the length is 29 as you can see from over here so i can just copy this Control c and then Control v to paste the hair right so that's what we have so actually let's start by taking a look at what the impulse response looks like, right? Let's write the impulse response and the input signal to a file and go to GNU plot and plot to see what signals we're dealing with. So to write to a file in C language, we first need to declare a file by saying file 
sorry, has to be caps, file, and this is just the pointer. We can say input sig for input signal, and then we say FPTR here just for file pointer, right? And then we can also say star IMP response for you know the pointer to the impulse response file IMP RSP and then we can say FPTR this is just the name I'm given you can use any name you can say file star file one comma star file two but I'm just giving it a descriptive name here so we have to declare these pointers for the file right and what we want to do is we want to open the file so I'm going to come here and say this one here input signal file to, we, we can copy this come here and say input signal file equals input signal file point I cause f open we use the f open function and if to open a file if the file exists it opens it if it doesn't exist it's created so we can just say so we can say input signal and then we want it to be in dot dat we use w for write this will allow us to write to the file put a semicolon here and we can do the same for the impulse response file which we call in here IMP RSP FPTR and then this one too we can say F open and we give the file a name we can say impulse underscore response dot dot and um, we put a comma and then we put W here to indicate we want to write to the file. Once that is done, all we need to do is um, just create a loop to write each value in this array, each value in this array into the file. So let's start with the input signal. We forgot, there's a typo here. I'll just fix it, signal. So we can come down here and say for int, i equals zero and i is less than sig length for the signal length of course i plus plus and what we want to do is we want to do f print f this is what's going to write into the file f print f and then we pass the name of the file pointer which is input signal fptr comma and then what we want to do is we want to we have to write it in a column form so GNUA plots plot data arranged in columns so the files have to be written vertically so what we want to do is we want to create a new line and then write the value right so we do this new line value and the value here is as simple as the content of this array I'll just bring this here index i like this so it's going to write the value go to the next line write the next value go to the next line so it's going to end up with 320 rows so it's going to write it vertically i hope you understand once it's done we'll actually open the file and you see that it's written vertically so once that is done we can um, put a semicolon here and then we can close the file by saying f close and then we can pass the um the the file pointer input sig fptr and then once that's done we do the same to write to our impulse response so we can say for int i equals zero and i is less than impulse response length i plus plus like this and it's the same method over here all we need to do is f print f and the name of the file here is we gave it a name the impulse response file pointer is imp underscore rsp fptr and then we have to print that vertically as well so all we have to do is new line first and then percentage f to print the floating point or the double number the double type so we're using percentage f because it's a floating point you use percentage f for floating point or double and use percentage d for integers so all we need to do is print the content of this array we can copy this and then put it here 
and then index i so it's going to print everything into the file and once that is done as well we can close this file by saying f close and then we want to close imp underscore rspftr like this so just this is just an example this is just um, a short exercise we want to do we want to take a look at what the um, the input signal and the impulse response looks like once we've we've examined that we go on to create our convolution algorithm and then convolve the two signals and see what output we get so let's rebuild and see what we get